Like a lot of horror movies from the 1980s that have gone down as classics and have spawned countless interchangeable sequels, what can be said about A Nightmare on M Street that hasn't been said already? The concept alone is mesmerising. A man haunts the dreams of children, and as their fear and awareness of him grows, so does his power, and any pain that is inflicted on them in their dreams also affects them in real life. And if they die in their dreams, yep, you guessed it, they die in real life. It's a really clever idea, not just within the movie itself because this is likely to affect you as the viewer. Try not to think of Kruger's iconic pizza face, jump and clawed glove before you go to sleep and chances are you might end up actually having a nightmare about him. I know I did on many occasions. And how do you stop him? He attacks the vulnerable when they're at their most vulnerable in their sleep. Well, that's the challenge that the protagonists in this movie face. Kruger's own story, in which he, being a child murderer, was burned alive by the parents of Elm Street after the law failed to put him behind bars, makes for ponderous thinking about vigilante justice versus official regulation. Either way, the teenage children are now paying for the parents' sins, and the crazy thing is the parents can't even tell their children about him, as that would only increase his power. Nightmare has an unrelenting raw energy that was missing from Craven's later films. His earlier films had it, like Last House on the left, but his later films were lacking this. Even the good ones, like Scream, it feels angry, feels vicious, like it wants to punish you before it entertains you. Freddy Krueger is in complete control during the dream sequences. Every time a character's eyelids close, we are now in his world, playing by his rules in which anything could happen. In fact, a lot of the film's tension stems from not even knowing whether a character is currently dreaming or not, and the fact that the protagonists are normal teenagers like in a lot of 80s horror movies, adds to the immersion. Even today the movie stands up pretty well, as long as you can stand an 80s disco soundtrack accompanying chase scenes. The special effects are incredible, gruesome, dirty. There's a number of standout scenes and creative ways that Kruger offers his victims, the best of the bunch being this insane scene where one of the teenagers is dragged up to the ceiling and mercilessly butchered right in front of her boyfriend. We see her being dragged up to the ceiling while he's still in the frame and it looks so real. Brilliant special effects. The only part I remember not really liking was the weird ending, which I felt cheapened the film slightly. Of course, it did give the climax more clarity because several things happened during the last 10 minutes or so which I felt didn't make sense right up until the last few seconds. Overall, A Nightmare on Elm Street is a fierce and fiery joyride with a clever concept, a good score and terrific direction. This movie gets a very well-deserved 8 out of 10.